Calculus was not made to be easy, it already is. Hey, BBQ Rambler here. This is video number four on hit factor, math, and scoring. Today we're talking about stage and match points. We'll have a nerd alert at... Nerd alert! And keep your eye on the flying bullets countdown. Let's get to it. In some ways, practical shooting match is like a round of golf. Golf has 18 holes that are each independent of each other, but your performance on each hole aggregates to your total match performance. If you do really badly on one hole, it affects your overall match performance, but it doesn't affect the next hole. Each new hole is a fresh start. Much like golf, a practical shooting match is made up of 4 to 20 stages-ish that are each independent of each other, but they aggregate to your match performance. However, practical shooting is very different from golf, particularly in a few ways. Number one, there's no fighting in practical shooting. All right, let's go. Oh! You like that, old man? You want a piece of me? Number two, in golf, you try to get the lowest score possible. In hit factor, you want to get the highest hit factor possible. And for number three, it's complicated, so let's dig in. Here's the hit factor equation for a refresher, points divided by time. You shoot every stage and get an independent hit factor on each one. So your hit factor on stage one does not affect any of the other stages. In golf, they add up all your strokes from every hole and whoever has the lowest wins. So you might think that in practical shooting, they would determine the winner by adding all your hit factors for the whole match and whoever is the highest wins. But this is not how it's done. Why? Because that would be easy. And if you want to do something easy, you could just go to IDPA and do time plus scoring. The real reason is that if you just added each stage's hit factor together, it would weight the high hit factor stages much more than the lower hit factor stages. And on high hit factor stages, time outweighs accuracy, whereas on the low hit factor ones, accuracy becomes more important. So if you just added all the hit factors together, it would reward hosers over turtles. Woo! Last, baby! You know the actual method evens this out by providing more points for stages with more targets, which forces the shooters to be good at both stage types to perform well in matches. I don't want a piece of you. I want the whole thing. Oh! This is where stage points and match points come in. There are a lot of things called points in hit factor scoring. So I call the points you get from hitting targets, target points. So target points and time leads to hit factor. Hit factor leads to stage points for that individual stage. And when you add all your stage points from different stages together, those same stage points are now called match points. Clear as mud. The number of stage points available on each stage is determined by the number of target points that are available on that stage. For example, on this stage you have two steel, each steel gets you five points, and you have three paper, each paper has a maximum of ten. Your two best shots, if they're both alphas, you get ten points. So two times five is ten, three times ten is thirty. So it's a total of forty possible stage points. Now this stage is longer, it has one steel and 14 paper for a total possible 145 target points which means there's 145 possible stage points on this stage. So the larger stage is worth more stage points than the smaller stage. So the next question is how do you earn stage points? So this is where hit factor scoring is very different from golf. 
Golf requires goofy pants and a fat ass. You should talk to my neighbor, the accountant, probably a great golfer, huge ass. Hey. In golf, your score on a hole might be higher or lower than your competitors, but your score is the same no matter what anyone else does. If you get a par on hole four and the best player on the course gets a birdie, it doesn't change your score. You still got par on that hole. In hit factor scoring, that's not the case. You get stage points based on how well you shot versus the best performance on that stage in that match. So let's go back to the 40 point stage and we'll look at me shooting this stage along with the guy who shot this stage with a higher hit factor than anyone else on that day at that match. My hit factor was about 57% of Austin's hit factor. So that means I get 57% of the available stage points. Since Austin got the best score, he gets 100% of the stage points, which is 40. I get 57% of the 40 stage points, which is 22.77. The other 17 shooters in between us don't factor in at all. The only thing that matters is my score versus the best score. Now you're gonna get it, Bobby. Here's an example to illustrate that point. Three guys shooting the same match. And note, these three guys are all in different divisions, so it doesn't matter how they do against each other, but I'm just doing this for visualization purposes. Stage one has 95 possible stage points. Let's see how they do. Hey. Chad had the best hit factor on the stage and got the full 95 stage points. Aziz was second with 70% of the points, or 66 total. And BBQ Rambler was last with about 61% of the hit factor, so 58 stage points. Next is stage two with 115 possible stage points. For the sake of the example, we'll pretend Chad had two mics on that stage. So Aziz got full points, Chad got 86% or 99 stage points, and Barbecue Rambler got 78% or 89 stage points. But let's say on stage three, Chad did this. Oh. Oh. No. Chad would be disqualified or DQ'd from the match and all his scores would be wiped out. Up top is the original stage one results, and down below is the results after Chad DQ'd and got his scores wiped out. So Aziz and BBQ Rambler both moved up in points because the top hit factor is now gone. So now Aziz has the top hit factor and all the numbers work off of him. And here is stage two. Notice that Chad got wiped out, but because Aziz was already the high hit factor, BBQ Rambler stage points did not change. 89.47 before and after the DQ. When the match is complete, your stage points from each stage are added together to get a total, and this is now called your match points. Now your match points are ranked against everyone else's match points to see who had the most match points and who is the winner. And the percentage you see here, that's the percentage of your match points versus the top person once again. The percentage of your match points compared to the match winner, it's not used to calculate anything, but it's a good reference for you. So if you are getting consistently 70% the match points of the top shooter, and then as you get better, you're making 75% and then 80%, you can watch yourself get better and track your progress. Price is wrong, bitch. 
So stage points and match points are the same thing. If you're discussing things that happen within a stage, you call them stage points. If you're talking about all of your stage points or how the same points will affect your overall match score or how your stage points will affect your match placement, then you say match points. In my opinion, the term stage points should be eliminated from the conversation since it adds nothing. Just like the words actually, literally, adulting, triggered, problematic, woke, my truth, I feel, goat, AF, and pleonasm. When I become USPSA president, the first thing I'll do is eliminate the term stage points and just have points and match points. And now it is time for a short attention span break. This is two competitors performance on a seven stage match. The columns on the left in brown, that's Mr. Brown. The ones on the right in purplish color, that's Mr. Mauve. This is a screenshot from the Practice Score Competitor app, which is a great tool. I found it a little difficult to navigate, but once you figure out how to use it, it's pretty valuable. The gray columns in the background are the max stage points for each stage. The color columns are how many stage points each of the shooters got on that stage. So if you look at stage one, the two were pretty close. Stage two, Brown is starting to pull ahead a little bit. Stage three, uh, Mauve had a really good stage and pulled back, looks like about even. Then stage four, Mauve had a pretty bad stage and dropped down again. Stage five uh, did better, starting to come back. Stage six, they were about the same, so not much change there. Stage seven, Mauve had a good stage there and came very close to catching up but not quite. You can see that Brown beat Moth by about nine match points overall. Here's one of the closest matches you'll ever see. This was this year, 2021, at the low cap nationals for USPSA production division. Nils Jonasson and JJ Rikaza, you can see all the way through the first 14 stages, they were dead even. Stage 15, JJ had an issue. I believe there was some controversy there. Struggled a little more on 16, then on 17 through 20, he came roaring back, but still just missed the win by about half a point. This match also demonstrates an interesting phenomenon of hit factor scoring. Nils got five stage wins and JJ got nine. And remember the high hit factor, which is the stage winner, sets the mark that everyone else's score is calculated from. So there were three stages where JJ was first and Nils was second. On stages two and 13, Nils got almost the same points as JJ, which is what you would expect to happen. But on stage five, Nils was second place, but only 87% of JJ, which means that JJ crushed everyone else on this stage by a wide margin. So here's a theoretical stage result. All JJ needed was a 6.7279 hit factor to get the full 70 stage points. Anything above that does not change how many stage points JJ gets, but it does reduce the number of stage points everyone else gets. So here's the actual stage result with JJ one full hit factor over second place, which pulled everyone else down by at least 10 stage points. Nerd alert! The stage we watched earlier was a classifier, Fluffy's Revenge 2. When I analyzed my scores from that stage, I saw that I got a 56.92% on the stage itself. But then when I ran the classification, it was 59.72. So if the classification is higher percentage than the stage, the only way that can happen is if the high hit factor on the stage was higher than 100% on the classifier. And that's exactly what happened. Austin shot a 13.97 
hit factor, which is right about here on my nifty classifier Excel spreadsheet that you can download at standingreload.com slash videos. And the 100% hit factor for this classifier in carry optics is 13.32. This chart shows why my stage percentage was a lower percent than my classifier percentage, even though my hit factor was the same in both calculations. Well, there you go. That's all you need to know about how to win in a hit factor scoring practical shooting match. Till next time. I think you've had enough. No? Now you've had enough. Bitch. <laughs>